Hi guys and welcome back to day five of our Mean Stack Challenge, uh, the Mean Stack Honolulu Challenge I should say. Uh, and today we're going to move on from our homepage that we've been looking at for the last few days and we're going to start to look at uh, setting up our login page. So I've gone back to the designs um, and the login page is obviously where the staff will log in. Looking at our use case, uh, an employee needs to be registered to use the app um, and they sign in using the login button. And the idea is, the storyboard is that on this page, uh, once you enter a valid username, password, click the login button, uh, you will either be successfully taken to the customer's page um, or you'll get a failure alert um, or you know, and, and kind of stopped in your trucks before, um, before you can continue. So let's have a quick look at the wireframes. So we've got a login page with username, password, big green login button. Uh, we've got the same thing again, but this time with an incorrect username or password notification. Um, and lastly, we've got the same page again, but this time uh, looking at how that might look for a tablet or, or a desktop. Now that we have an idea about what we want our login page to look like, let's go and have a look at the main stack and see what we've currently got. So I'm going to go across to sign up to start off with. And when I look at the sign up page, I see that I've kind of got two parts of this page. At the very top, I've got a heap of different social accounts. So I can log in using Facebook, Twitter, Google+, LinkedIn, or GitHub. Um, or I can just log in using my, um, my email and set up a username and password. Um, when I sign in, uh, I can do the same thing again. I can sign in using uh, a social account or with a username or password. And um, what I want to do is, um, instead of just pulling all this out and, and making this page look like our wireframe, I want to take you through a little bit of, uh, or, or I want to give you a bit of an idea of how the social uh, login concept kind of works within the main stack. So let's say, for example, that you want to allow users in your app to log in using Facebook. So how do you do that? Well, the first place to start is let's have a look at uh, this particular view and look at the code that's sitting behind it. We do that by um, going across. So at the moment, we've been looking at the core module. We'll go across to the users module. And in the users module, we'll go down to views and we've got three uh, three different sections or three different folders uh, for the different views. Um, we've got authentication, which is where the sign up and the sign in pages will live. We've got password, which is all about uh, password resets and those kind of pages. And we've got settings, and that's all about uh, your profile and uh, adding different social accounts to your profile or managing your profile. And that that's uh, a set of pages that you you get you can get access to once you've already logged into the app. So we want to look at authentication. So let's start off with the sign up page. Now the sign up page is split into two parts, which is um, almost the same as the way that our page is actually displayed um, on, on the UI. So we've got our social accounts at the top and we've got the fields for our local account uh, down the bottom. So let's say that we wanted to log in using Facebook. How does this process work? So when, when we click on the Facebook button, uh, what the code is telling us is that we want to go to uh, auth uh, slash Facebook. So this is a URL we want to go to. Um, and the, the sort of technical term to describe that is as a route. Um, and let's have a look then at routes and, and what that's all about. And the place that we find that is up on our app. So if we go to the app and we go down to routes, we we'll see we've got two sets of routes. The ones we're interested in are the user server routes. Um, now, if we didn't know which route we wanted to look at, we just go back to sign up and just have a look at the route that we're looking at is uh, auth-facebook. So when we're looking through here, we'll see that we've actually got two routes with auth.facebook. One with auth.facebook, uh, and it's actually using Passport. So Passport's our authentication mechanism. Uh, it's using Passport's authenticate function and passing through a Facebook uh, attribute, if you like, and it's returning with an auth.facebook um, callback. So the first set of code here is used to send details for our app across to Facebook. And the second line of code here is doing something with the response or the callback that comes back from Facebook. Now, in order to actually send 
uh, a proper message to Facebook and to get that message to actually authenticate, uh, we actually need to pass through some information um, to that particular call. And the place where that information sits is over in our config folder. So in config, when we go to environments, we can see that we've got three different environments. We've got development, we've got production, we've got test. So if we look at development, we can see that here's actually um, some details about Facebook. And then it's got the client ID, um, the client secret, and the callback URL. Uh, now, if you want it to actually set up uh, authentication to Facebook, you need to go across to the Facebook developers page. So if you do Google search for Facebook developers, um, you need to go through the process to sign up for a developer um, app ID. So you want to register your app with Facebook. And when you do that registration process, you actually get um, a, a couple of different pieces of information back from Facebook. And the bits that you're interested in are the ID and the secret. And they go into uh, these two um, sections of the code here. So you will replace app ID and you'll replace app secret. And the reason that you put the code over on this side um, is because when you're setting the client ID for Passport to use to perform your social authentications, you've actually got two ways to pass through either of these details. You can send through either an environment variable, which is the process environment Facebook ID. So if you had um, environment variable set up with your cloud hosting provider, for example, you can just pass through environment variables um, or you can um, push through a string as an app ID or an app secret. Your callback URL in the development.js file has a reference of localhost 3000 and that's fine if you're working locally on, on your machine. When you move across to production though, uh, this particular URL should actually reflect your production uh, URL, not localhost. Otherwise, you'll have um, you have some issues with the callback coming through. So, with the client ID and the client secret and the information that we provide to Passport, Passport can then use all the code that's already set up as part of the main stack and allow the authentication to occur with Facebook. The next step is to do something with that. So, we then have this callback. So, when Facebook, when the Facebook authentication has occurred. Uh, and everything looks all good, we then need to call this function here, and that's users.oauth callback. So let's have a quick look at what that is. Now, if I didn't know where to find that, I first start with users and have a look at the controller um, that that references. And I can do that just by looking here. So var users, uh, we've got uh, controllers, user server controllers. So I can find that by going to app controllers and going to user server controller. When I look at this controller, all it's really doing is is referring me off to a set of other controllers. So go back to this users folder here and um, have a look at the authentication uh, server controller. Uh, and this one I see things like there's sign up, there's sign in, um, and here's that OAuth callback that I was um, talking about before. One of the key parts to this particular piece of code is that it's just a generic piece of code. It doesn't say anything about Facebook anywhere here. And the reason for that is it actually has a reference here for strategy. Um, now, if I want to know what that strategy is, I can go over to config and go down to strategies. And in the strategies folder, I see I've actually got uh, a, a file for each social account that is actually available um, in, in the app. It also includes one for the local account. But let's have a look at Facebook. Um, now, what we're, what we're talking about here is we've uh, we've sent or we've used Passport to send uh, our app ID and our app secret across to Facebook. Uh, the user has typed in their username and password. Uh, we've identified, or Facebook has identified that uh, everything is kosher, and it is then send the details, uh, an authentication token back to our app. And um, and there's a set of information that comes with this this access token, this refresh token, and the profile and details that we've asked Facebook to return to us. Now, what what this piece of code is doing here is taking the structure that comes back from Facebook and mapping that to the user fields that we've actually got set up as part of our users uh, kind of data model, uh, if you like. Um, 
and and that's that's kind of it. Like um, that's pretty much how the the social accounts works at a, at a very high level. Um, but uh, just to reiterate, if you want to use Facebook or, or Twitter or any of those social accounts um, that are, that already come set up with the mean stack, you really um, just need to uh, make sure that your um, your client ID, your client secret in your environment files are set up to reflect um, the app that you've already registered with your social account. So with Facebook, with Twitter, with LinkedIn, with, with GitHub, you actually need to go to um, their, their website and um, they follow their links to the, their developer section, uh, register an app with them um, and get these client ID and client secret IDs and then you can use them to um, to authenticate your users and it's 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 a very um, straightforward and simple process uh, when, once you've um, once you've sort of gone through it um, that's kind of where I'm going to leave it today thanks for joining me uh, please subscribe to the channel uh, and check out uh, bossable.com for more details tomorrow we'll actually start uh, building out our, um, our login page to reflect our wireframes thanks again